Uh, Carlo asked me to talk about the future uh, a little bit. Um, and uh, I suggested that uh, we stop at a little bit immediate future because it was just recently decided by CIVL that at least category one competitions will use uh, pressure altitude and will not use GPS altitude anymore. Uh, you guys fly in a very complicated airspace here, especially around London. Uh, and uh, it's important to know if your device uses uh, GPS or pressure altitude, how this influences uh, your score in the XC League uh, and your airspace uh, infringements uh, with the XC League. When you, when you try to post your flight to the UK XC League and then it's rejected because there is, a, there is an airspace infringement. Um, there's a, there's a, there are the pros and cons of, of each pressure, uh, of each altitude. They both have pros and cons. Uh, the pressure altitude is extremely accurate. Um, and most of all, uh, it shows the same altitude each time under the same conditions. So it's completely repeatable. The next time you are in the same altitude, in the same conditions, it will show exactly the same uh, altitude. Um, the pressure altitude is measured by one single very tiny uh, sensor, which is inside the OD3 and all of your varios. And this is so accurate that it's, uh, when you think of it, it's quite incredible. The same uh, sensor which measures altitude also measures your vario. And your vario responds to uh, to a few centimeters per second. And if you can imagine the weight of a column of the air, uh, the weight of a few centimeters of air, um, and to have a sensor which can measure this weight, it's quite, a, it's quite amazing. But this is what the pressure sensors in our, in our varios are doing. When you are climbing with half a meter, one knot, or half a meter per second, it measures that very accurately. It measures that with the accuracy of a few centimeters per second, which is quite amazing. This, and it measures it with the, that's the response. The accuracy is less than the height of this ceiling here. So it will always put you in a block of air which is less than, than the ceiling of this, uh, of this place. This is how accurate they are. Um, uh, on the side note, uh, this is the only way that the Airbuses uh, measure the, uh, the altitude and the general aviation and the gliders. They only use these sensors to measure altitude. So whenever uh, an Airbus needs to miss another Airbus, they do it with a Mach 1 speed uh, each and they miss each other with 300 uh, meters difference. And they do it very, very reliably. There is a lot of uh, uh, security in there. Uh, there is a bad thing about it. Um, you need an additional pressure sensor, so you do need this sensor, which is not available everywhere. It's not available in many smartphones, and even many smartphones which do have it, uh, it's not very accurate or reliable. Um, so, uh, getting on to it, the GPS altitude does have its, uh, its uh, good things. Uh, it's readily available. Every device which has a GPS will also give you an altitude. Uh, this altitude is, uh, is actually something that is measured uh, with, uh, on, well, it's measured like you would take a, a, a meter and you would measure the, the altitude from where you are to, to, to what it measured. And it's always the same. It doesn't need any setup. The only setup it needs is uh, it needs to find the satellites and then it measures the distance to these satellites, which is also an amazing feat when you think about it. They are very far away at strange angles and you can, you can uh, locate yourself to within a few meters. Um, but it does have the bad and the ugly things. Um, uh, most of all, uh, it has random errors. Uh, the GPS is much more accurate in position than it is in altitude. That's because of the positions of the satellites. Uh, the accuracy is actually much better uh, in, uh, in the lat and long directions than it is in, in height. Um, and most of all, it's not used by aviation, which means that you may really be 5,000 meters above the ground uh, and it's 
absolutely accurately measured and you took your time to, to get a very good average measurement. Uh, but unfortunately, the Airbuses which are flying around you in 5,000 meters, they use a different way to measure the altitude. And at 5,000 meters and everything above 3,000 meters, the differences between the GPS and the pressure altitudes can be very, very big. They can be up to 500 meters and even more when you go higher up. So even though you really are 5,000 meters above the ground, the Airbuses use another way to measure their altitude, even though they would also say that they are 5,000 meters above something else. Uh, so, uh, unfortunately, nobody else in the air uses this altitude, and this is why you will get in trouble with the air traffic controllers if they find out that you were where you were. Uh, and it uses some mathematical algorithms uh, to calculate it. It's not, the GPS measurements are, are, have a lot of heavy mathematics behind it. They try to predict what you are going to do. So, and this is why you have different GPSs for walking in the woods where there is a lot of trees which obstruct the GPS signals. You have different settings for the GPSs when you drive a car where you know that you are not going to stop uh, immediately and that you cannot make a turn like that or, uh, and you, you cannot make very steep turns. And you have different settings for aviation where the mathematical models will not expect you to stop suddenly or to, to accelerate suddenly. And those are all mathematical algorithms. And I'm, I'm telling you this because I'm going to show you an example. This is um, an example from a competition flight which was done last year at the European Championships. Uh, it, was, it, is, it was done by, uh, by two different instruments which were on the same cockpit. So this is a trace of one flight recorded by two different uh, devices. Um, and this is the pressure altitude trace of the first, uh, of the first device. Um, it is what it is. And this is the pressure altitude trace of the second device. So that's the device that was right next to, uh, to the first device. And if I, if I go back and forth between the two, it would be very difficult to spot any difference. You will find a, a, the difference of a few meters between one and the other, but really they are exactly the same. Now, this is the trace of the GPS altitude from the first device. Um, it is quite different from the pressure altitude trace, if you, if you see. And this is, you know, the, the altitudes are measured in a different way, so, so different altitudes are measured. Uh, and this is the trace, uh, the GPS altitude trace from the second device. Now, remember, these two were exactly the same. It's really almost impossible to see any difference. Now, this is the difference between GPS altitude from one and the other. And they are very different. Especially if, for example, if this would be the airspace limit here, then this flight trace would be accepted because it's below this line. But the other trace goes more than 50 meters higher. And this is mostly because of the mathematical algorithm that, that we were uh, discussing. Because it expects you, if you are going up, it expects you to continue to go up. Uh, and then it detects, okay, this, this guy is not going up anymore, so let's go down now. And there's always a big lag and if if we would compare these altitudes, you will see that they are completely differently shaped. And this is uh, an overview of all three of them. You can find differences in GPS altitude in many places and they don't make sense. Sometimes it's one, sometimes it's the other, sometimes one is higher, sometimes one is lower. And this is the difference. And mind you, there's a fourth one on this graph as well, but you don't see it because it's the same as the first pressure altitude. And um, when they were flying in the Europeans um, uh, last year, they were measuring, they, they had a cone finish at the end where it was very important which, uh, at which altitude you would hit the cone. So the guys uh, who had a wrong GPS altitude, which was, which was higher, they would, uh, they would touch the, the cone much sooner than the guys who were flying next to them 
but their GPS random error was, was down there somewhere and they had to fly another 500 meters or something to, to get to the cone. And there was a lot of complaints and it didn't work and then they stopped using the cone uh, where in fact they should actually use the pressure altitude and it would all be fine. And uh, uh, I gave this presentation to, to the CIVL Bureau uh, and of course previously they already knew that this is the way to go. And uh, they did decide to use the pressure altitude from now for hang gliding and paragliding. And it's just important to, to understand the differences. GPS altitude is fine, but, but it will just go up 100 meters. There is, at the end of this flight, the, the difference between the two altitudes is 140 meters. It's just, it's normal. It's, it's what happens with GPS. Uh, and it doesn't happen with pressure. If it did, then I wouldn't fly home tomorrow, I'd drive.